بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم بیک ٹو مائی چینل سو لیس لک ایٹ ٹوڈیز ویڈیو ٹوڈے ٹوڈیز ویڈیو از گوئنگ ٹو بی آن گرو ریڈیو اینڈ دس از گوئنگ ٹو بی آن فلٹرنگ ہاؤ ڈو وی ایکچولی فلٹر سگنلس اینڈ دا موسٹ کامن وے آف فلٹرنگ اٹ از ایکچولی یوزنگ فلٹرس اینڈ دے آر سم بلٹ ان فلٹرس وچ آر اویلیبل رائٹ ہیئر یو کین click on filters and there are like bunch of the filters which are there right so let's look at them you have band pass filter band reject filter fft filter low pass filter high pass filter ir filters you name it all everything is there so we're, what we're gonna do we're gonna look at a very uh, basic type of filters uh, which we normally see in engineering uh, which are known as low pass filter high pass filter and we have band pass filter all right the, these are like different type of filters which are available to us and we're going to look at them so the flow graph is quite simple uh, we have a signal source as you can clearly see there is a signal source that signal source is generating a signal which is a cosine signal i can double click on it let's look at the properties of that uh, which is a complex i'm choosing it to be complex it's a cosine of order wave in terms of frequency i'm using a variable or a uh, gy slider called frequency in which i have defined the frequency uh, and so let's click ok that is going to my source this source is going to a throttle block uh, you can why throttle block whenever you're running a simulation you gotta include throttle block in your flow graph that's all you need to remember I'm adding a signal with a, a fast noise source, which is also there, that has a Gaussian noise source. I am also using a variable called noise, so I can adjust the amplitude of the noise, how much noise is there in my system. Uh, after that, both of these signals are added together using an adder block. And after that, it's going to my filters. And three types of filters that I'm using and i want to show you the functionality of all three filters uh, first filter is a low pass filter so let's look at it so since my entire flow graph is based on complex numbers uh, complex waveform which means i have real and imaginary components so i'm using a so so that's why it is complex then uh, let's look at a couple of things you have a decimation factor then we have a gain factor We have a sample rate and stuff like that. So let me just raise this for right now. And then we have cutoff frequency and a transition bandwidth. So let's quickly go over this. What do I mean decimating it? So decimation. The simple and the easiest way to remember decimation or understand decimation is this. Let's say in my flow graph, my sample rate is 256 kilohertz. Right? This is what my sampling rate is. This is how many samples I would see. So what decimation is, let's say if I have a decimation of four, which means that out of four packets, I'm keeping only one. You're decimating it, all right? So if I have four packets, I'm going to keep only one. Out of four packets, if I have a decimation factor of four, that means out of four packets, I'm going to keep one packet. Out of four packets, then the next packet, out of four packets i'm going to keep one that's what it mean by decimation which means you're actually bringing down your sample rate that's what decimation does so that's the factor in which based on this factor you're bringing down your sample rate which is going to be your sample rate whichever you set in your flow graph which is right here right now my sample rate is around 256 kilohertz so what i'm doing right now i'm i'm saying by having a decimation factor of one i'm saying you know what whatever is coming in as a sample rate i'm going to keep everything as is that's what it means by this by having it one gain is just gain uh cutoff frequency so i gotta set up a cutoff frequency for any low pass filter or high pass filter that okay that's the limit that's the cutoff frequency within that frequency range from 20 kilohertz and less that's the band i want to pass all right i want to keep all the frequency which let's say from zero hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz any frequency which is above i'm going to reject those frequencies 
all right i hope you're getting it so what cutoff frequency is anything so that's the cutoff region after that my filter won't work anything less than 20 kilohertz that's the frequency my 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 my, my signal is going to keep rest of them it's going to block blocking means it's actually going to attenuate my signal strength blocking means it's going to attenuate it so you won't see the effect of it all right now the thing is uh, transition width transition width, width is also another phenomenon which we need to know regarding filters is this if you have seen an ideal curve uh i think i might have to draw this all right so let's just quickly look at it all right so this is my lpf all right this is a response of my lpf all right this is what it is the ideal lpf should be like this all right but actually it's something like this is tapered so it's like a box shape this is the response i mean this is also in positive side so this is in positive side positive frequency this is a negative frequency all right so this is an ideal response so if i make this sharp like this if i make my transition with sharper which means i need to perform lots and lots of calculation because it will be very computationally intensive to make my filter sharp sharp this is an ideal scenario but actual response of my scenario is this so transition width is you're going to transit you're you're making a transition from your cutoff to this region so do you want to make it very steep which means you want to make it as close to this ideal or do you want to make it too big if you make it too big, you will be passing also other harmonics, which are also there. But if you are making it too steep, like making it smaller, like making it like a box shape, that would be computationally intensive for your devices. So there is a trade-off between how 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 steep you want to make and how wide you want to make. So I have, so I have chosen it to be like around one kilohertz because my signal my cutoff frequency is around twenty kilohertz. So I hope you're understanding this, what transition width is, what is decimation is. All right, let's just quickly look at it. Now let's look at my high pass filter. Same thing. Uh, okay, high pass. Now in, in high pass, we have interpolation. What interpolation means, just like in decimator, we're shrinking it down. In interpolating it, we're increasing it up. So by having an interpolation factor of four, which means I am taking samples which are four times of that. So if my samples are coming in one kilo, I'm looking, taking four kilo samples. All right. Sometimes we need that. Gain as is as one. And then we have a cutoff frequency of 20 kilohertz. That is also a cutoff frequency. And then we also have a uh, transition width, which is about approximately one to the three so it will pass any frequency that is above 20 kilohertz transition width i'm leaving it as as uh, and all the rest of windowing function is same beta function is exactly the same all right the next thing is uh, the next filter that we normally see in engineering is actually a band pass filter there is a particular band that you want to in your entire band that you want to pass so that is given as, so it's a decimation, is still one, sample rate. I want to have a low cutoff frequency, so I want it to pass a frequency that is from 30 kilohertz and 60 kilohertz. I want, I want this particular filter to reject any frequency which is less than 30, and I want, I want this filter to reject any frequency that is greater than 60. That's what I mean to say when I say a bandpass filter. So when I run this flow graph, Let's quickly run this flow graph and let's look at it. Let's turn off all the filters, right? Let's turn off all the filters. This is my actual signal, which is at about 10 kilohertz. All right. So let's look at let's let's look at my low pass filter, which is going to be my this filter. So now when I look at this low pass filter, so it is indeed. So let me turn off the unfiltered signal. Now let's look at it. So this is at about zero hertz. So the filter response, when you see a response of a filter, which is in a box shape, when you see it in a textbook, 
you will see a response of an ideal filter which looks something like this which means this is a negative frequency component and this is a positive frequency component there's no such thing as negative frequency component but in complex domain there is an existence of negative component is due to the mathematical processes that we get negative frequencies but actually this is an actual response so when you're seeing this in your thing this is your zero this is where this 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 thing is center at zero so this is what we are interested in and this ideal filter or any filter is symmetric to your negative frequency component as well so when i look at the bandwidth from zero kilohertz all the way up to here this is around 20 kilohertz and this is what we have set for our cutoff frequency so if you were to look at it this frequency right now is lying at about 10 kilohertz when I see this 10 kilohertz, which means it is indeed passing this frequency. Look at my unfiltered form. This is exactly the same signal where that thing is. Now, uh, let's reject it. Let's remove this unfiltered. Now, we're looking at an output of only a low pass filter. So, now when I increase my frequency, all right, you can see this thing is moving. This thing is moving because this is still passing this frequency because the bandwidth of this guy from zero because the, the cutoff frequency that we have set is from zero to 20 kilohertz and it is still passing this you can clearly see this now what will happen when the frequency goes above this so let's just simply do it 16 20 as soon as i hit 20 and let's just go a little bit more than that it's not passing it it's sort of attenuating it all right so if i remove my unfiltered uh, and, and low pass filter, if I were to look at it, my signal is at about 22.5 kilohertz. When I pass this signal to a low pass filter, it's actually bringing this signal down right here. So let me just look at this. And you can clearly see this is what, what my signal is. And if I were to move this, you can see this thing is moving. So it's not passing this frequency. I hope you're understanding it. All right, same thing, I can include increase noise, when you increase noise all right now the next thing I want to look at uh, let's just close this and let's just play this graph again and let's look at a high pass filter so still I'm gonna close my low pass filter I'm gonna close my high pass filter I'm gonna close my band pass filter this is my uh, actual signal which is at around 10 kilohertz around 10 kilohertz all right so when I pass it through a high pass filter, so I, let me turn on my high pass filter. Now let's look, close the unfiltered form. As you can see, now the response, so this is an ideal response. So this is your, sorry. All right, this was your low pass filter. This is an ideal low pass filter this is an actual low pass filter it is passing all the frequency in that bandwidth now what does it look like for a high pass filter if you were if you have seen a tra i mean uh, if you have seen um, a function of this this thing is something like this this is how the response is on both of the sides this is what a response of a high pass filter look like because the filters are symmetric, this is negative frequency, we really don't care about this. So anything less than what we have set, so this, the set frequency for this is about 20 kilohertz, I believe. That's what I said. So it's going to pass all the frequencies that are above 30 kilohertz and it's going to reject all the frequencies which are below 30 kilohertz. And indeed, this is exactly what I'm seeing. This is at 10 kilohertz. And this is at zero. Let's look at check out the bandwidth of this. So this is from zero and this is 20. So that's that's good. But it is rejecting a 10 kilohertz signal, which means rejecting means attenuating it because this is how before you pass it through it, this is how an unfiltered signal looks like. It is at about negative 8.72 dB. Now, when I look at when I pass it through, okay, let me, I think the noise is too much. Okay. All right, this is what, let me just turn off the noise so you can clearly see this. All right, this is what my signal looked like, about 11.30 dB. When I pass it through a high-pass filter, let's include some noise so I can, all right, let's, let's look. So this was my actual signal. This is an unfiltered. So it's actually from, from 0 to 
30, 20 kilohertz, that's the range, and after 20 kilohertz is going to start passing this frequency. So it actually went down from negative 8.76 dB to somewhere around negative, right here, somewhere around negative 79, negative 79, negative 79 so it went down quite a bit when i pass through this high pass filter so when i increase this frequency now as soon as it reaches its cutoff region all right let's just quickly increase this so now it's 15 kilohertz 19 kilohertz less 23 kilohertz it start passing it so it's start rejecting all the lower frequency and it start passing it it's the same waveform as your unfiltered form right here. If I move this, so it's rejecting all the frequencies which are below 30 kilohertz and passing every all the frequencies which are above 20 kilohertz, not 30 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz. Now let's look at the same thing in terms of a bandpass filter. Now when I turn this off, let me turn this off, let me turn this off, let me turn my bandpass filter off. Let's pass, pass this signal through a bandpass filter. The frequencies that we have selected is actually from 30 kilohertz to 60 kilohertz. So it's going to keep a f all the frequencies from 30 kilohertz to 60 kilohertz. All right. From 30 kilohertz to 60 kilohertz. So let's look at it. Uh, it's probably right here. All right. So this is it's going to keep all the frequencies. So it should reject this frequency. So when I turn off my bandpass filter, look at the response of this. This is my actual signal when I pass it through it a bandpass filter let's let me turn off my unfiltered form now this is what my actual signal looks like at 22 uh, at 23.9 22.9 kilohertz now it's actually rejecting it because it has attenuated my signal because my actual signal is somewhere over here which is an unfiltered form when I filtered it it actually went down why because it should because the only frequencies this band will pass which means with the same gain when i increase the gain it will increase the gain in my block but it will only pass this frequency as is so let's increase the frequency to 30 kilohertz and let's hit enter so now as you can clearly see this went into this region of a bandpass filter Right, you're seeing exactly the replication of this signal because of complex number, exactly the same thing. But in real life, you only focus on positive frequencies. There's no such thing as negative frequency. And we don't have equipment to measure negative frequency. Negative frequency come into play because of the complex pro process. Because if you remember course, if you take a, even a real signal, that is also made up of... Uh, of complex number because it according to cos I, ho I hope you're getting it because cos is cos is e to the positive j theta plus e to the minus j theta divided by 2 that's why this negative component pops up when you're working with complex numbers so it start passing all the frequencies from 30 kilohertz and you can clearly see this so let me just turn clearly see this clearly see this it's passing all the frequencies all the as soon as you go above 60 boom start attenuating it you can clearly see this attenuated signal right here this was my actual signal this is my actual signal but this is when it actually removed i mean it's, it's not going to pass the frequencies it's going only going to pass the frequencies which are in this band so now let's increase the frequency you can clearly see this is what is not being passed through this bandpass filter so i hope you like this small tutorial on filters and specifically high pass filter and low pass filter and if you have any questions uh, leave it in a comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel